University Hospital Physicians and Case Western Reserve University uh, was really the first place where uh, neuromodulation uh, was thought of and performed, uh, starting with uh, uh, spinal cord stimulators, uh, which was basically the predecessor to uh, deep brain stimulation. This is not a static field. Uh, there's a lot of technology that goes into deep brain stimulation, and uh, both the technology and the neuroscience behind it is rapidly evolving in our understanding. And uh, we uh, stay on the forefront of those changes by being actively involved in some of the new therapies and developments. And by doing that, uh, we're always a step ahead in that we know what's going on, we're part of the process, and we're able to stay ahead of this therapy and give our patients really the latest. Greg Grinley has advanced Parkinson's disease uh, with severe tremor. Uh, he had a young onset case and these patients tend to develop dyskinesia very early on and so he was really stuck between a rock and a hard place with tremor when his medications uh, were worn off and then dyskinesia when they were actually working well. So the procedure involves listening to uh, the neural discharge, the actual uh, electrical activity from individual neurons and uh, lowering that wire as we go through the target and basically determine where the target begins, where it ends, and characterize it to determine uh, sub-circuits within these, uh, uh, these networks in the brain to see where the movement areas are involved that are particularly involved in the patient's symptoms. The critical moment in the surgery is when we finally are able to turn on the actual stimulation wire and see what kind of benefit he gets with stimulation from that. And we saw that his tremor uh, completely went away, um, that he had good dexterity in his hand. He was able to hold an iPad uh, stable in his hand for the first time, where before that he had a, a very severe tremor, uh, particularly in his right hand. If you understand uh, the brain circuits involved in a disease or disorder uh, that has a neurological basis. Uh, there are many opportunities where deep brain stimulation might be a treatment for that. And so as we learn uh, these other circuits for different disorders uh, and how DBS may affect it, uh, there may be uh, other, ther other disease states where DBS uh, is an option. It's uh, been looked at for depression and we have a study uh, being conducted here uh, in depression and bipolar depression. It's been looked at for uh, memory problems as a possibility. Autism, uh, Tourette's uh, is still under investigation. Uh, there's a, a number of different disorders. Eating disorders are possibilities. Uh, people have thought about schizophrenia, addiction. Uh, so a long list of different uh, neurologically based conditions uh, where DBS could potentially have, have a treatment because the way that it works is dependent on the anatomy and circuitry of that part of the brain that is related to that disorder and it has a neurological basis. And we understand it, then we have an option, uh, an opportunity where we potentially could treat that with this therapy. We have a very large comprehensive program and uh, the comprehensive uh, setup is very important in that we have uh, uh, four neurologists uh, dedicated to movement disorders, two different neurosurgeons uh, that are functionally uh, trained, uh, that this is their specific area of expertise, and then neuropsychologists and psychiatrists, uh, nurse practitioners, that we all work together as a team. And uh, these patients go through a rigorous evaluation uh, in order to uh, be cleared for surgery and also so that we can make sure that all details are taken care of and that they have the smoothest uh, course, uh, both before, during, and, and after surgery. Um, our neurologists are trained in intraoperative physiology, which gives us the ability uh, to uh, directly feed back um, when we go to programming the patient uh, in our clinics. We know where we uh, chose to put the lead, why we put it there, uh, what their brain map and physiology looked like and uh, that allows us to do better uh, with the brain surgery procedures and we get feedback from our programming sessions but also when we're programming them it's feeding forward and we're able to determine um, where we expect to get benefits and side effects um, from our history with the patient before so there's a nice continuous loop and continuity of care uh, where we're able to uh, really get the best results and not all programs uh, do it this way 
um, I think the best in the country do, but not all programs have the personnel to do this.